I'm Eric, and this is a PIO vlog. Special fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Local calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Callers, the complaints seen coming out of the unit. Hustle party trapped, but there's an older lady that lives there. She's not seen. Right, we get sized. Two stories of multiple units on the roof. Okay, so the complaints are out. Alpha side. LPS, come in. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am vlogging all by myself today because Connor is taking some much deserved time off and we didn't want to wait to keep you updated on everything happening around South Metro. So I am here to tell you about all of the recent calls that we've had over the past week and we have had some very interesting ones happen in our community. The first incident that I'll tell you about occurred on Monday, July 20th in the city of Lone Tree, very close to Station 34. South Metro received numerous reports of a townhome on fire, and it just so happened that the Denver Metro area's news helicopter was very close to the scene. They saw the smoke and they flew over right as Tower 34 was getting on scene and jumping into action. So we've got some incredible video of those fire conditions from the air so that you can see what our firefighters were up against. Due to the volume of fire in the middle unit, a defensive strategy was used, meaning the crews only battled that unit from the exterior until they could bring it under control. The neighboring two units were also involved with fire, and firefighters were in the offensive strategy in those buildings, meaning they went inside with hose lines to do the attack, while the middle unit was being controlled by crews on the outside. We have a couple different views to show you. We also have Safety 35's helmet cam and helmet cam from Engine 33's captain from the time they entered the neighborhood until the time that they got the fire knocked down. And here's a look at what happened. Two and a half. Two and a half. Break it up. I got your flat load. Okay. Water! Oh, 
Finally, water, water, water. We need to be defensive. Do that, five, five, five. Water. All the way down, Schmidt. If you can, bring it down. Okay, yeah, 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 copy. Break engine 44 to the Delta 1 exposure. And Tower 34, I'm working with your aerial to get to the defensive operation going on. All right, water's coming right now. Charlie's side. Charlie's side. Start low, Benny! Start low, work it up, buddy! Low and work up! More pressure! Commander, 10 minute ticker and be advised we have a breathing problem as my attack related to this at 9449. We need a medic unit to that area. Medic on the second alarm and have them go to that call. First medic on the second alarm, out of 15. See if you can hit those Gs. Out of medic 17, one of the team back up. Put the first down. Command, engine 17, level 1, you're down. Engine 17, we have no more room for you. You're gonna just bring your crew up here. You can just start peeling back on both sides of the team. Copy that, team. Do I have to start the middle of the team? That's a firm, yeah. Uh, your landmark is going to be just a solid no way to stack. Okay? Yeah, that's not the need to it. Got 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 it. Sure. Eric Hurst, E-R-I-C-H-U-R-S-T, Public Information Officer with South Metro Fire Rescue. All right, sir, Eric, uh, kind of walk us through what happened. Just take a couple more questions for you. One, when you talk about the heat and, and firefighters having to deal with this, what's that like? I mean, obviously, there's got to be, uh, you know, extreme danger with that. Of course. So the gear that the firefighters are wearing and when they're carrying equipment with them, they can weigh 100 extra pounds than how they weigh on a normal day. Add the ambient temperature of just the hot summertime afternoon and then add in the heat from the flames that they encountered. It's very hot, it's very taxing on them as they're pulling hose lines, throwing ladders, doing really, really arduous work. That's another reason to bring in that second alarm worth of firefighters, just so we have enough backup here for when those first firefighters need a break and need to get rehydrated. We've got more forces ready to go. Any firefighters need uh, extra treatment other than just on, on uh, scene here? Yeah, thankfully no firefighters were injured. Unfortunately, we did have two civilians that had to be transported to the hospital. Appreciate yeah, it, sure, you. no problem. Uh, hey, James. How you doing, man? Hi, Sean. Hey, we'll be on six minutes. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Mind if I... Uh, no, not at all. Thank we're, you. Yeah. There we go. Okay, if you could hold this down to your side, that's fine. Okay. Well, thank you. Sure. Okay, James, are you set? All right, I'm rolling. Okay, if you could, uh, again, spell first name, last name, position, fire department. A second alarm was called, which doubled the amount of firefighters here, which puts us right about 60 firefighters. That's because of the complex situation, the amount of fire, and because it's just a really hot day. So the first group of firefighters who were here are exhausted. So we wanted to have a lot more reinforcements to do more work. Okay, I'm two people injured, I understand. Correct. One person had difficulty breathing, possibly related to smoke inhalation. Another person had minor burn injuries. They were both transported to the hospital. And at this point, the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Oh, so even though you know a barbecue girl was involved, Still investigating that cause? Sure, so we know what people have told us on the 911 calls, but our investigators will still need to take a look for themselves to make an official determination. Oh, thank uh, we, you. Sure. That's wonderful. Appreciate it. Okay. Oh, I want to get a photo of you while you're taking your mic off. I will get a quick photo. Okay. Oh. Yeah. 
How you been, man? Good, James. You? Oh, living the dream. Yeah, buddy. Um, and also, if you could just uh, state, again, the importance of being careful. We also want you to use caution even after you're done cooking. Just because the flames are out doesn't mean that the device itself is 100% cooled off and safe. We see a lot of instances where people will push a cooking device up against a building or put it in a storage shed or even inside of their garage thinking it's safe, only to wake up later that night when a neighbor or the police department or the fire department is banging on their front door or forcing it open because the outside of their house is on fire. Those exterior fires are extremely dangerous because it takes a while for smoke and heat to get inside the house, which means that smoke detectors or smoke alarms aren't going to sound immediately. It's going to take a long time for that to happen. So it's easy for people to be sleeping through a catastrophic fire occurring outside their home until somebody wakes them up to tell them. Over the past week, South Metro has also responded to several unique incidents, and in some cases, they were very high risk. One of them was a trench rescue that occurred in Highlands Ranch. Workers were inside of an unprotected trench along the foundation of a home. They were applying an adhesive material that's kind of like tar, and one of the dangers with working below grade and in a trench is ventilation. And with improper ventilation, there's not enough oxygen getting inside of the hole. A worker who was down there was overcome by fumes and had a medical emergency and was trapped down in the hole. When firefighters responded and found the unprotected trench, they were concerned that it could collapse and trap the person inside. Firefighters from the technical rescue team and the hazardous materials team both responded. One group of firefighters was working on treating and extricating the patient while the hazardous materials team was monitoring air conditions and also making sure that a hose line was in place to put out any ignition and also to decontaminate the person and our firefighters when they came out of the trench. Later that afternoon, firefighters responded to another technical rescue incident, this time in Douglas County, for a horse that had fallen into a ditch. The horse had fallen off of a hillside and found itself wedged upside down between the ground and a barn. Its owners were unable to get it up and neither were vets. The vets treated the horse on scene and used sedation so that the horse wouldn't hurt our firefighters or the veterinarians trying to help it. It took about 90 minutes for firefighters to get all of the appropriate rigging in place and make sure that it was a safe operation to hoist the horse up the hill onto solid ground so that veterinarians could help it stand. It was very shaky and very dehydrated. So the veterinarians treated it on scene, it was able to stand on its own, and it was reunited with the other horses on the property before South Metro left. On Saturday, firefighters from Station 16 on the dive team responded to Chatfield State Park at the north boat ramp for a truck towing a trailer and a jet ski that had become submerged underwater. South Metro responds to a few of these incidents every year, and they're usually related to a parking brake issue or a braking issue, and a vehicle will just slide into the water. Thankfully, nobody was injured when this occurred. Firefighters work very closely with the park rangers and the tow truck operators. They'll dive down underwater with tow straps and secure them to the vehicle. Then they will use the tow cables, make sure that they're safely in place, and the vehicle will be hoisted out. I'm not gonna dump the rest of the water, Jeff. I'm just gonna feed you. You got a ton of negative buoyancy with this. Close your keel before I hand it to you. Full <laughs> slack.
that afternoon, South Metro firefighters responded to yet another interesting call involving an animal. You may have heard that firefighters will occasionally rescue cats out of trees, but perhaps you've never heard of firefighters rescuing bears out of trees. This particular bear had been seen wandering around the South Metro suburbs for a couple days, and that evening, it was seen near Heritage High School in the city of Littleton. It climbed up a tree, and Colorado Parks and Wildlife officers applied a tranquilizer, so the bear fell asleep up on a tree branch, and it needed to find a way to get down. Engine 16 and Tower 12 responded to that call. The firefighters and the rangers were able to get the bear inside of the bucket of the aerial, bring it down to the ground where firefighters used a mega mover to carry it to a safe spot where the parks and wildlife officers tagged the bear and applied some additional medical treatment to make sure that it was okay. They later transported it to a safe area to be re-released into the wild. They estimated that the female bear was about a year and a half old and weighed somewhere around 80 to 100 pounds. Was she already tagged? Yeah. Did you do that? Uh, yeah. yeah, she's... Oh, she's so, known. Yeah. Oh, she's, uh, she's probably about a year and a half. David, Ida, 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 Nora, Hold on, one sec. Go for it. checked our mailbox earlier today and we do have some envelopes in there addressed to the PIO office. Thank you so much to everybody who has sent patches to us. I know that a lot of you are waiting on patches from us and we are working to get those out as soon as we can. We'll do patch shout outs once Connor gets back. We've mentioned Station Saturday a few times in our previous vlogs and I'm excited to announce that this video isn't going to be the only one posted this week. You can look forward to a brand new first ever South Metro Station Saturday to be posted tomorrow. We asked for your suggestions on how we should do those. We had suggestions of doing the busiest station first, the oldest station first, the newest station first, going around through the different battalions, all kinds of cool suggestions, and we just couldn't figure out which one we liked best. So we're pulling numbers at random. Hoping for a station? Uh, I'm hoping for a good one. I'm hoping for a real good one. But we've got 29 good locations. Uh, I'm going to draw the first station Saturday out of this bag. So here we go. And the first station Saturday is station 18 in Highlands Ranch. Awesome. Uh, my favorite station is probably station 33. Uh, a lot of history at station 33. It's actually the first station I did a ride along with South Metro Fire, it was Castlewood Fire at the time. Uh, Dan Mullen was a lieutenant, retired here as a chief officer. Um, also the station of Mike Freeman. Mike spent the last few years of his career there and was really integral in a lot of people's careers here at this organization. And then finally, Station 33 is my uh, station that covers my neighborhood. So it's the first new station in my neighborhood. A great mix of calls out of 33s from residential to commercial to highway. Uh, you never know what you're gonna get at 33s, but I love it. It's one of our older stations, but has a lot of character. Thank you so much for joining South Metro here on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button so you'll get notified right away when we have new videos posted. 
If you enjoy the video, please like it, and we welcome your comments, suggestions, and questions, and we love interacting with you. So please send us a note, leave us a message, and we'll get back with you as soon as we can, and we will see you next week with a new video. Have a great weekend.